Hello and welcome. Today I would like to show you how to make a wine cooler. We have, have a piece of ash here, which we will make it from. Um, wine coolers often are made from steel, but as wood is an insulating material, it's actually much better to use wood. Of yeah. course, it's always better to use wood. Yes. So we're going to uh, make a wine cooler like this, like this. Oh. Bottle of wine. I made this one a few years ago from, um, from Ash also for a friend of mine. Her name is Nikki. I love Nikki and Nikki loves wine. And um, uh, that's why I made them in there. My favorite wine makers, the Bussies from Triso, northern part of Italy. Of course, we wanted to have it waterproof on the inside and we'll make a nice sheen on the outside. Of course, it all starts with this block of wood. I already um, put little center holes in mm -hmm. and I took the corners off. And that's enough. Let's put it between centers and make it round. It always starts with making it round. Ready, Lise? Yeah. Okay, let's go. doesn't have to be perfect yet. What's important now is that we make a proper tenon because we're going to drill on this side with a huge drill. So we need all the grip we can get over here. Make a proper tenon. And I want the tenon to be exactly this fit, this diameter. So, oh, I've said it before, so I need to reduce the diameter by three millimeters. That'll do. We can put it in a chuck already. Okay, so that is, how do we call this lead? Snark fit. A snark fit. And if I have done it all right, then my center slides in exactly the same point as where it was before. Next thing to do is make a flat surface over here and start hollowing. It doesn't have to be a, a perfect finish cut, it just needs to be flat. So if the, because if the, if the drill, if my big Forstner starts over here, I want the both, both of the wings to grab exactly mm. at the same time at the wood. Mm. And now you see, ah, yeah. it's not even. And now it is. Here's my little Forstner bit. It's 80 millimeters. Um, of course I can do that with a gouge. But, well, there's nothing wrong with being lazy. There we go. Important if you drill a hole like this, that you reduce the speed all the way to 
Um, let's say somewhere 300 RPM is enough for such a big drill. Um, when I start drilling, I want the drill just to touch the wood gently. And once I'm in there, I can make more speed. And as you can see, see this is hard work for everybody, for the lathe and also for me. I have to need a lot of power over here. That's why I use this thing. So now I can make more power with less effort. To see there's still moisture in here. I don't know if you can understand me still, but I'll continue while turning. Continue, I will continue talking while turning. Um, I cut these blocks out of unseasoned green wood a few years ago and I have them in my barn for several years now already. It is 13 centimeters in diameter and if you want to buy a piece of wood like that you will notice that you can't buy it because um, it doesn't work to get these blocks dry commercially so I can only advise you cut your own blocks put them away and leave them and just wait 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 eventually they will dry get rid of the shavings inside you won't be the first one who ruins his workpiece just to get his portion a bit back Time to do some measurements. I want the... <laughs> What's so funny? It's a nice way for measurements, I think. <laughs> yeah, I, I want the, so I want the whole inside to be, uh, let's say, 21 centimeters. <coughs> that is... I need to go in that far. There we go again. Oops. So that means that we're, that we're nearly there. That's it. It's like a smoking gun. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just water because it's, get, it's getting very hot in there, of course. Well, it's not water, it's steam, actually. It's oh, steam. it's steam, right, sure. Let's blow the dust out. That's it for the drilling part. Um, 80 mils is the biggest drill I have. But I want to go a bit wider on the inside. Um, so I have to use my gouge to do so. And also I want the inside to be a bit, bit smoother. That's why we will use some sandpaper later on. First let's make it a bit wider. Speed, we can put the speed up again. Woodcut Pro Form Hollower. A 
move it in gently so that we get a nice and even wall thickness. at the end, one more cut at the end. Good. This is a scraper with a very large radius, um, so it's very easy to keep the, to get the ridges out. Did you say so? Yeah, it is so. That's about it. Blow the dust out. And start sending. Here's a little tool I made to send the inside of these hollow forms. It has a radius already, so I can very easily Go in there. You're the Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream. Terrible song. Oh, that's, that's smooth, right? Hope so. <laughs> ah, that'll do. <laughs> yes, it's okay. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Oh. Uh, sorry. <laughs> oh, that's great. So, it's too much dust in here. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to do the most important uh, test of the wine cooler. Does the bottle fit? <laughs> oh my god, it fits! Yay! <laughs> I think it's made for two bottles. No, it isn't. Okay. No, it isn't. Mm, no. Cool. The next thing to do is make sure that the inside of my wine cooler is waterproof so and I want to make it as waterproof so that you also can fill it with water and put flowers in it that of course would be a waste of the wine cooler but there has to be wine in there no flowers yes. and to do that we have to move to my kitchen where I have some brewer's pitch. This is the brewer's pitch. I let it melt now. It's a sort of a tar. Um, it's made out of birch trees, I believe. And there's a company in Germany that is making this for 
uh, I think it's more than 200 years now that they make it. Just by coincidence, it's also on my website. What I do now, I take a piece of carton because I don't want to spoil any of this stuff in my kitchen and throw it in. And now I just move this around. And what I'll do now is turn it and make sure it hits every spot inside and throw it back while I keep turning it so that it hits all the walls. Back from the kitchen with the wine cooler. Um, and now we are going to make a bit of a shape. Normally when I would remount a hollow shape, I would, I would use my remount hollow shape reverse jig like this. Then I can put it back between centers. I can mount it between centers and <laughs> but in this case the the bruise pitch is not that hard yet. So we have to think of another way because otherwise this will press into the brewer's pitch and I'm afraid that it won't come out again. So in this case we'll do it a bit different. First we make First we make a new edge over here and remove the brewer's pitch. That was my parting tool, um, but while we're here we can just as well give it a straight finish at the same time. So I use my uh, skew to give it a perfect finish. You gives it a much better finish than a parting tool, of course. Short touch-up with 320 um, and spray this edge over here with melamine lacquer. It is um, I use melamine here because it is almost instantly dry, and that's. What I like in this case, because I can move on to the next step. What a smell. Yeah, it smells terrible. <laughs> so now we wait for five minutes. But while waiting this five minutes, we might just as well make a little jam chuck so that I can mount it back in the chuck in this way. Because I still have to uh, uh, make a shape over here and um, give it a good and send it. And send it. Oh, and send it. Sure. Mm -hmm. Uh huh.
Let's measure. It is nine and just a little bit centimeters. Ten point five. Making a jam jerk, by the way, always goes in the same way. It's ten point five now. The next thing, next time I measure. It is still a little bit too big, and the next time it's still a little bit too big, and the, and the time after that it's still a little bit too big. And then it is too small. <laughs> Watch me. So I should take off a little bit. Ooh. No, 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 it's perfect. No, no, it's, no, oh it's perfect. <laughs> I was terrified. <laughs> no problem. It's like a horror show today. <laughs> We're going to uh, make a lovely shape. The outside. Well, it's not much shape, of course, but. bit of shape mm -hmm. so that it is a little bit smaller on the upper side and a bit bigger on the downside of the wine cooler. A little bit of curve. A little bit of curve, very little bit of curve. Because we don't have we don't have that much room. Most of the times when I put uh, these lines in, it's to hide something. <laughs> Just that you know. Um, well, there's the shape. Time to do some sanding. Lekker, lekker. Two forty. Yeah, normally I would wear, I have a beautiful uh, respirator with a motor on my back. Well, you with the camera and me with the re yeah. respirator. 
Well, anyway, it's uh, sanded until a 320 grit. Normally I would spray two layers of lacquer on the, uh, on the wine cooler now. At least two, but because this is just for the video, um, this one is just for the video and, and uh, I will reduce the layers and then we polish it. Now let's get rid of the dust. This is a high gloss uh, lacquer. I have several high gloss lacquers behind my lathe every day. Um, this one uh, I use now because it's fast drying, it's water based and it is easy to spray. So put the speed down, otherwise the lacquer will also be on the ceiling. Um, and another important thing I almost forget is to cover to cover the places where you don't want the lacquer to be. For instance, my chuck and also very important my life center. And now again. So we have waited uh, for half an hour and drank a cup of coffee and now it is time to, because the, the lacquer is dry now, uh, and now it's time to get a super shine on this high gloss lacquer. Um, if you look at an orange, you know the orange thing that you can eat, and if you look at the skin it's not flat. It's sort of a small, well, lots of small mountains. Uh, the same thing is on this high gloss lacquer. If I want to get that off, I take a very fine piece of sandpaper. This is Abranet 800. And I go over the complete finish to change this orange skin in a really flat surface. Because what you see now is that the shine goes off a little bit. Yeah. But don't bother, we'll get it back on. Okay. And you should take your time to do this. When Lisa's here I always have the feeling I should do things fast, 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 fast. But you should really take your time to smoothen that surface. And in real life I would spray another layer of lacquer now. Because two layers are better than one layer. Okay, now it's smoothened over everywhere. And we'll polish it. And by polishing, when I'm polishing, I'm using a lamp. You see, a lamp. Oh, oops. Whoa. I see dust. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Normally I have this away when we're videoing because Lise doesn't like, well, Lise doesn't like anything that looks like a trunk, so also this has to be moved away and this also has to be moved away. But now I need it because um, 
If you look at the surface now, you see a, well, a spot um, that comes from this, uh, several light bulbs in there. Um, and when I'm finished polishing, I want to be able to see these individual LEDs. So let's start polishing. I use Yorkshire grit, the white version, that's the super fine or the micro fine, I don't know, it's in a white box. It's very fine stuff. Um, it's pumice actually, that um, in a sort of a wax there's little stones and by wiping the wood these stones get smaller, 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 smaller. And they are sort of sanding the surface. In a minute, um, so you can see that you, the, 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 this lamp over here, now it is a wide spot and while polishing it will get more cleaner and I will see every little light bulb that's in there. On a slow speed now I start to polish. And now already you see a little difference, I hope, because <laughs> here you see a white spot and here the spot is already uh, much narrower. Get the wax off. Look over there, I can count the LED bulbs inside, well I know how many there are, but I can count them and see them all individually. And now I know that I have a real shine. So we are more or less at the end of this video. Um, and if you have been able to watch the whole video, now is the good news. If you share my video on Instagram or Facebook and you tag me in it, then you might just find um, on your doorstep this wine cooler, Yorkshire Grid White and Brewer's Pitch. No, the wine I keep myself. <laughs> well, um, well, maybe I, I'll, depends on how long it takes. Could be that the bottle is empty already. Um, so, tag me in Facebook or Instagram and um, one of you is going to get lucky. That's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope to see you next time in the next video. And for now, bye. bye.